is Megan, one of the naturalists here from Beaver Creek Reserve, giving you our very last episode of Butterfly House Tours for the summer. So what happens now? Where do all the butterflies go when it starts getting cold? Well, today we're going to be answering those burning questions you all are thinking about. So there are two different ways of winter survival for our butterflies. There's migratory and non-migratory. So migratory means that our butterflies are going to be flying somewhere. There's also non-migratory means our butterflies are going to be staying in the same place. So we're going to start off with migration first. So we actually have small and large migrations. Some of our butterflies that don't go too far are red admirals, common buckeyes, and the American painted lady. So these four butterflies are actually going to head down south to our warmer states here in the U.S. So now on to our famously large migration. We're going to talk about the monarch butterfly. They have the largest migration of any insect on our planet. So these monarchs right up here are actually getting ready to hit the road, traveling about 25 to 30 miles a day. So these monarchs are going to be actually making it to central Mexico in about November. And they're going to hang out there in the cold months. Once it hits about March time, they're going to start heading their way back up to the southern states but they don't make it all the way up to us. They actually lay their eggs in those southern states and the babies from the southern states come all the way up to us, so those are the ones we're gonna be seeing in May and June. So one of the things we do here at Beaver Creek Reserve is tag monarch butterflies before they venture on their way south. And this summer we're actually tagging 100 butterflies. The first part of our process with tagging is that we select our freshest looking butterflies because these ones are likely to make it down south. So after we catch our butterflies, we begin our tagging process. We put a little sticker right on their hind wing, and first we actually have to write that sticker code down, then we actually write the day and where we are here in Wisconsin. So after we write down our information, we want to take these stickers off and place them on our butterfly. So the way we do that is that we use our toothpick and peel that sticker right off. Then we place it right on the butterfly's hind wing and gently press down, just making sure that sticker isn't going anywhere. So after we've gotten all our information and tagged our butterfly, we let them go, hoping that they'll make it to central Mexico, where researchers down there might find our butterfly. So something similar to migration is immigration, and that's what a lot of our butterflies do, especially the gray hair streak and the little yellows. They end up wandering up here from the southern states or the southern part of our state. They like to eat the plants that we have up here, they like to drink nectar, lay eggs, and they spend their summer up here and they end up dying off. But that's okay because they'll end up wandering back up here next summer. So now let's look at our non-migratory species. So these butterflies go through a hibernation process called diapause, which basically means that they bring their life processes to a halt. They produce a natural antifreeze, which prevents the water in their bodies from turning to ice. So remember now, all butterflies go through the same life cycle. And we have butterflies that hibernate in each one of these different stages. So let's start with eggs. In the fall, many hair streaks actually lay their eggs on twigs and branches. And these eggs will actually hang out all winter. And when we get our warmer days, the eggs will hatch into caterpillars and they'll continue munching. So now other butterflies hibernate as caterpillars. Some butterflies like the Aphrodite and Great Spangled Fritillary will lay their eggs in the fall. And these eggs will hatch into caterpillars. And these caterpillars, well, they're not going to eat. They're actually gonna start building a nest at the base of the plant. And that's basically meaning that they're hunkering down for winter time. So other butterflies like our red spotted purple and our viceroy, their caterpillars will actually hatch in late summer. And actually they'll get to about to the middle stage of their caterpillar life. That's when they stop. They're gonna make a little shelter around themselves because that's what they're going to hibernate in. And when it becomes springtime or our warmer summer months, they're gonna continue their life cycle. So I bet you recognize these guys right here next to me. All of these giant swallowtail caterpillars are actually going to overwinter in their chrysalis form. Then they'll come out in early summer as beautiful butterflies. Other butterflies that hibernate in their chrysalis form are other swallowtails and our cabbage and mustard whites. So now on to our final stage, the adult. So some butterflies like the Eastern Kama, the Question Mark, the Comptons and Milbert's tortoise shell, and our Morning Cloak will hibernate as adult butterflies. Some areas where you can find them are here in our gazebo at the top, in wood piles, in between bark, and just places where they can kind of camouflage themselves in and hibernate all winter. Thanks for watching our Butterfly House series. Hope you enjoyed the videos as much as we liked making them. So remember, there's still a little time to go visit the Butterfly House before it closes on September 1st. Thank you so much for supporting Beaver Creek Reserve. Hoping to see you all next summer. See you later. 
Hi, I'm Eric Keisler, Executive Director for Beaver Creek Reserve. Thanks for watching this great educational video from our staff. To find out more information like this and others, check out our website at beavercreekreserve.org. You can also support us by being a member or donating to our endowment campaign, which is supporting Beaver Creek through this COVID-19 crisis. Thank you. We appreciate your time.